is the day that the Lord has made. We have come to rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, let's give God praise. He's done great things. This is a year of amazing things. Let us rejoice. to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same the name of the Lord is worthy 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 to be praised worthy to be adored. Hallelujah. Anybody excited to be here on tonight? Another opportunity to bless our God. Come on and sing this song with us. Put those hands together all over the sanctuary. For the Lord is good. Yeah. Say, and take your place. Let your kingdom be established. O ancient of days. For you are good. And your mercy endures forever.
to that excellent God that we come to this day in a spirit of revival, giving him praise, honor, and glory, an excellent God. Our scripture reading is coming from Psalm 8, the eighth Psalm. King James Version renders the text this way. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visiteth him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou hast made him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, and the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passeth through the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. God's word for God's people. Come on, you can take your prayer posture. We're going to talk to this Lord who is excellent. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, you are excellent, great God. There is nobody like you in all the earth. Ooh, ooh, you're in a class all by yourself. You're holy, you're mighty, you're wonderful. And we exalt your name on tonight. We thank you for the privilege of being gathered together in your name. And God, we know that it is only because of your grace and your mercy that we are alive and here right now. So we thank you, God, for all the ways you've made and for what you are going to do on tonight. We can give you praise in advance because we know that when your people gather together, you are not only in the midst, oh God, but you inhabit our praises. And God, tonight we've determined that we want to glorify you and no other. You are our audience of one. And so do what you have to do to remove every distraction in the name of Jesus. We thank you for giving us traveling grace to arrive. But God, we now need you to rain on us in here. We need a refreshing, oh God, in the name of Jesus. It's been dry in the natural, but somebody's been dry in the spirit. They need an overflow. We need a deluge. We need an out pouring we need you to rain on us in the name of Jesus we thank you God for the rain of word you have sent on tonight we trust that by your power and might you've already visited with the preacher in the study you've already been speaking to his spirit now tailor make the word string them together give him divine inspiration tweets from heaven God give him a message oh Lord that will penetrate hearts and relieve troubled minds Lord we're praying in the name of Jesus, for your word to go forth and not return to your void. It's going to accomplish some things on tonight. It will loose on tonight. It will heal on tonight. It will deliver on tonight. It will encourage on tonight. Lift up on tonight. Breathe new life into us by the power of your spirit. Send your word, oh God, and we'll be healed. Send your word, oh God, and speak to us, and we'll be changed. God, we know that you have already been with us because that's how we got here tonight. But we came and we gathered because we need a word from you, because one word from you will change our minds. One word from you will change us in our situations. And we know, oh God, that you have delivered one here. So I'm asking you to stand in him, stand with him, speak to him and speak through him. And you have a prepared people whose hearts are ready to receive and because we know you never disappoint us somebody came hungry so you're gonna feed them somebody came thirsty so you're gonna quench the thirsty god somebody came seeking and they shall find somebody came asking and we know we'll receive so in the name of jesus oh the excellent mighty great name we lift tonight 
In the name of Jesus, let your power be on display. Lord, send the revival until your people change in the way we're walking, change in the way we talk. Send a revival. God, until we go out being excited as evangelists to tell somebody that Jesus still saves, send the revival. And let it begin in the house right now. Oh God, we ask you to fill this place and let your glory be on display. So because we know you hear us when we pray, we can give you praise in advance. We bless your name. We say hallelujah. We declare tonight we're ready to receive from you. So let the praises go up, oh God, and have the praises of your people. And we'll pre 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 prepare our hearts for your blessing. And we believe you, Lord God, to hear us when we pray. So we thank you in advance for all that you have sent this way to do on tonight to revive your people in the name that is above every name the only name that matters and the only name that still saves the only name that still delivers in the name of Jesus Christ our one and only risen and redeeming Lord Amen
madness of tears Everything he's done for me I know he can And I know that he will He'll step right on in He'll step right on in Yes he will Praise the Lord, everybody, that we serve a God who steps in on time. You've experienced the on-timeness of God, the timeliness of God. Will you celebrate that we serve a God who's on time? Hallelujah. Woo. Well, celebrate Him for a little while. Celebrate him for a little while. It's all right. We may as well. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Yes, Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. How we honor the Lord tonight for this wonderful privilege to gather together in worship to celebrate a season of revival. I need to be revived. How about you? I need it. I look forward to every Wednesday in the Word in October and May. And thanks be to God, we've come to this 10th month of 2023 and it's revival time on the avenue. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So turn towards somebody. You know how we do. Tell them I'm so glad to be in worship with you. So glad to be in worship with you. If that person didn't smile, make sure you find someone who will. Put a smile on somebody's face. Say, I'm so glad to be in worship with you. Oh, saints are hugging and everything. You can hug, you can high five, you can do whatever's necessary to pass the peace of God to your sisters and brothers who are here in the worship space. Won't you help me celebrate those who didn't make it to the cathedral, but they're watching us via the World Wide Web. God bless you, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. We thank God for each one of you who shares with us in virtual reality today. God bless you one and all. How many were in prayer with me this morning at 6 a.m.? God bless you. Praise God for your continual prayer time with us each and every Wednesday at 6 o'clock. And thank God for the prayer ministry that started us off at 6 o'clock p.m. this evening. Thank you, Dr. Atuquefio. Thank you, prayer ministry. All of these prayer warriors, they're always ready to pray with and for you following the benediction of every worship service. They'll stand here in the Lord's house and pray for you if you need an intercessor. And we invite you to utilize their ministry after the benediction of any worship service. They'll be available to you and we thank God for them. How about this magnificent music ministry, aren't they? Something. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. They are a blessing to the body of Christ here at Wheeler Avenue and to every brother and sister with whom uh, they share their ministry. And I thank them so much for being here. I want you to pray for our minister of music. He's not here tonight, not feeling his best, but keep Brother Leon Christopher Lewis lifted in your prayers. Will you do that? And we believe that God will take good care of him. I want you to pray, pray for our founding pastor. He likewise is not feeling his best tonight. So I want you to lift him in your prayers. I still believe that the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous avails much. Is there a prayer warrior anywhere in here? Is there anybody who's tried prayer and you found out prayer still works? Oh, bless the high name of the Lord. And so we thank God for praying saints and we look forward uh, to the results, the testimonies of those prayers that have been lifted up to God uh, from this place regarding God's people, especially our leaders. To God be the glory. Listen, we've got a church picnic coming up. Have you heard? It's coming up. <laughs> Amen. On the 22nd of October, we will have our church picnic following morning worship 
and we'll be going down to Discovery Green to have a good time. And today we need you to register now. Some of you have registered. How many of you have already registered? Let me see your hands. God bless you. Now let me see the hands of those who have not registered. All right, look at them, look at them, look at them, look at them. Hey, keep your hands. No, 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 don't put your hand down now. No, no. Look at them and give them that look. Give them that side eye. Come on, just look at them. Give them that side eye. What's wrong with you? You know you're going. Why you haven't registered yet? Why are you waiting to the last minute, all right? We want to get registered so we have an accurate accounting, or at least a quasi-accurate accounting of those who will share with us on the 22nd down at Discovery Green. I think I got something. Do I, no? I do have something to give away? Okay, so listen. Um, if you registered the first week, stand up, please. If you registered the first week, first week, stand up, please. All right, praise the Lord. What's your name, ma'am? Jackie, did you get a T-shirt yet? You did not? Reverend Johnson has one. You go see Jack. Go see Reverend Johnson. He's got a t-shirt for you. You registered the first week. Ron, you registered the first week? Uh, prove it. I'm just playing. Go see, go see Reverend Johnson. He's got a, he got a t-shirt for you. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Because it's your birthday today? The 29th? That woman said the 29th. It's the fourth. I would have preferred you say the 29th of September. That's the month. Happy birthday month. Today's your birthday? It is your birthday today. Have you gotten your t-shirt already? You did? She said, uh, yeah, I did. You're on the committee. Okay, so well. You got, you got enough. So, will you please give her your t-shirt? Can she have your t-shirt? Because her birthday's on the 29th of this month. Rem Linda, I was out of town on your birthday, so that means you deserve a t-shirt. You know how many birthdays I'm out of town for? But that suit is looking good on you, Rev. So you got one from him as well. Praise the Lord for you. Come on, let's celebrate these who have the privilege. Everybody's gonna get a t-shirt. We've got plenty of them, we got plenty of them. Just wanted to give away some tonight. Who has not yet registered? Let me see you, stand up please. You've not yet registered. Come on, yeah, stand up. No, don't be shamed now. Don't be shamed now. Why are there so many of you standing right now? What is wrong with you? Do you plan to go? So why haven't you registered? You, ha! Dr. Tammy, she said, I just did it. She showed me a phone. She registered in church. God bless you. Please give her a t-shirt. That was good stuff. That was good stuff. She registered in church. All right. So all of you, while you're standing, take your phone out. No, no, no. Don't sit down. Get your phone out. Register right now. Now, we're going to stand right here. We ain't got nothing to do. Rev, Rev, I'm going to preach in a minute. Get your phone out. Register. How are they supposed to do that? Go on to the website. Sir, go on to our website. Do you know our website? Just want to be sure. All right, register right now. Who in the choir hasn't registered? Lord, have mercy. I'm just bragging on y'all. And you have me registered for the. You registered? Praise the Lord. I appreciate y'all. Thank you, sir. Mother Rosie, you going? You going to the. You not going? You don't do picnics? That's not churchy enough, is it? That's not churchy enough. You registering her right now? Thank you so much. Yes, you are going. That's your t-shirt. We got a t-shirt for today. All right. We got you. All right. You all finished? Not yet? I can't hear you. What'd you say? You need t-shirts back there? Okay. When they start selling them out there, you can go. I have so much fun in church. I don't know why it's so much fun. I, I, does anybody have to buy a t-shirt? Yes. Okay. So you got to buy them. I hope you will because we want to go in all of our wheel of wear when you go down there. So make sure you make sure you buy a t-shirt. All right. You done? All right. She raised that phone like she meant that thing. Listen, go see Reverend Johnson after the, after the worship and you got a t-shirt as well. You raised yours too. Like, get me. Okay. All y'all right there. Y'all get to go see Reverend Johnson. That's enough. Sit down, sir. No, you should have gotten it in 10 seconds ago. Thank you all. I'm so appreciative. You got it? Praise the Lord. I'll see you down there. You got it? Praise the Lord. I can't wait to see you 
on the 22nd. I'm glad you did it. Thank you so much. Those who are at home, register for the picnic. It's going to be great. We want to make sure we don't run out of food or run out of, run out of goodies to share with you. So make sure you register and then meet us at Discovery Green on October 22nd at 3.19 p.m. We're going to celebrate until about 7.19. Is that right? From 3 to 7. Is that right? 319, is that okay? Praise the Lord. And we're going to have a great time. And I hope that you will share with us in that experience. It's offering time in the Lord's church. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. I love to give. I love to give to the Lord, especially. The Bible declares, Given it shall be given unto you in good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Shall people give unto your lap? With the same measure you give, it shall be given unto you. Our courtesy court members are moving about us now. If you need an envelope, these sisters and brothers will place one in your hand and you can place your gift therein and you can utilize their ministry and we thank them for their excellence in ministry. If you'd like to use the digital platforms, they're scrolling on the screen. You can text to give. You can use the QR code. You can go onto our website to give. However you're led to give this evening, we want you to do just that. If you missed the opportunity to give, if you were not here on the first Sunday, you just neglected to give on the first Sunday, we invite you to give your tithes and your offerings. Tonight's special revival offering helps us to continue to do the work of ministry, and we thank you so much. Whether you're in the cathedral or you're in the virtual space, we invite you to share with us in this time of offering. And as we do that, let's consecrate these gifts unto the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks because you're a great God. You're an awesome God. You're an amazing God. You do amazing things. Tonight, we thank you for the privilege of life, health, and strength, and for the wonderful privilege that you've given us to gather in this, your holy space. And now, as we prepare to give unto you, we pray that you'll bless each gift and each giver. Let no one lack as a consequence of what they give tonight. Will you continue to return to your sons and daughters these financial resources so that we will always have the testimony of our elders that we can't beat God giving no matter how we try. We thank you for victory in our finances and we'll say it until we see it. In Jesus' name, somebody shout amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Let's give unto our God in just a moment. This magnificent music ministry is going to bless us again. How many have already downloaded chapters and verses? You have it on your phone, you have it on your iPad, you have it on your device, you've downloaded our newest CD. If you have not do done that, you can do that while we're sitting in church. You can download our wonderful work. You've heard much of it over the last couple of, several months, even year. Even last year, you've heard much of the music that has been recorded. There's one song that we have not sung. And that's because, somebody just hollered out, Grace, yeah, that's right. You know why we haven't sung it, right? Why? Because the singer wasn't here, yeah, right? The, nobody can sing Grace the way it was recorded. And we don't want to put anybody on Front Street to try to attempt to sing like the inimitable Pastor Kim Burrell. She's with us tonight, and we thank God for her presence among us tonight. We are grateful that she has returned to be with us, and we'll hear her phenomenal voice in just a moment, even as we hear the phenomenal voices of the music ministry of Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. But just before they come, I want to present to you my beloved brother and friend, the Reverend Dr. Jerry Carter. Dr. Jerry Carter has been here to Wheeler Avenue multiple times, but when he walked in tonight, he said, I've never been to the cathedral, and I'm so glad that we we're able to welcome him to the cathedral for his first of multiple times tonight. All the way from the great state of New Jersey, where the New Jersey folk in the room. Thank God for the seven New Jersey people of Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. All the way from the great state of New Jersey in the Calvary Church, he's going to bless us in just a moment as he proclaims the word of God to us. He is a preacher par excellence. Those who've heard him, you already know. Many of you came because you've heard him multiple times. You've heard him before, and you know that he is able to rightly divide the word of truth and proclaim to us what thus saith the Lord. So immediately following the music ministry of the Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church Mass Choir, will you receive my brother beloved, the Reverend Dr. Jerry Carter, my friend and brother.
God is so good. Thank you, Jesus. Isn't his grace amazing? Well, somebody just say, thank you for your amazing grace, oh God. Oh, yes. It was especially in the rain. Was he not good to us to get here today? I passed by a lot of wrecks, but none of us were in them. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God's grace is amazing. Thank you, Lord.
Gracious God, we thank you for your amazing grace. We thank you for the fact that it was grace that brought us this far. And grace will lead us on. We pray now that you would bless your word to simply fall into the flow and the fellowship fruitfulness of what you've already been doing here on tonight. This is your hour. This is your moment. And we give it to you now. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. This is the day the Lord has made. And we rejoice and we are glad in this day. Let me try it again. This is the day the Lord has made. rejoice and we are glad in this day. Uh, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Um, God is a great God and we celebrate this God on tonight who is the God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, let me take a moment, let's take a moment and just salute just the capable and committed and consecrated leadership that you have here in Dr. Marcus Costin. Mm -hmm. He not only is a voice here at Wheeler, but he is a voice for the kingdom of God in this nation and in this world and so um, so grateful that again we are brothers we are friends and we uh, salute his leadership here and just will the church all that you have done here all that you are doing here it's clear that god is using this ministry in some very powerful ways um you have to give me a second, as I said, as, as the pastor already alluded to. This is my first time being here and uh, taking it all in. And um, all I can say is God is good. Yeah, God is good. So again, thank you for your hospitality. Thank you for the invitation. And then uh, the bonus of coming here to... Uh, Houston, as I get to see some faces of some people who came through Calvary, he was there for a while. Good to see you all here on, on tonight. And then, 
triple bonus is to be able to hear Cap Pastor Kim Burrell on tonight. Um, but we thank God for you and just amazing gifts that, that you have. Uh, I want you to turn with me to a familiar passage. It's so familiar um, that I pray that God would help us to hear it afresh on tonight. Luke chapter 15, verse 25. Luke 15 and 25. And I'm reading from the New International Version. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, look, all these years, I've been slaving for you and never disobey your orders, yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, who has squandered your property with prostitutes, comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. <laughs> My son, the father said, <clears throat> you are always with me, and everything I have is yours. <laughs> but we had to celebrate. <laughs> And be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. Tonight I want to preach from the subject, you should learn to dance. Is what I want to preach. You should learn to dance. The <laughs> George Murray calls the parable of the prodigal son the most divinely touching and humanly tender story that's ever been told. He's not the only one that feels that way. Many of us share the sentiments that uh, the parable of the prodigal son is probably one of the greatest short stories ever told. But my argument tonight is, might be surprising, but it's very simple, and that is that the parable of the prodigal son is as offensive as it is beautiful. <laughs> it is offensive tonight because it turns our worlds upside down. The parable of the prodigal son is offensive because it gives us a picture of life that we're not used to. Parables are not just descriptive. <laughs> but parables are redescriptive <laughs> because parables redescribe reality. And that's why many of them are offensive without you even know it. Parables cut you and you don't realize it till you get home. <laughs> parables kill you softly. <laughs> and this one is quite offensive. Matter of fact, the offense of this parable is embodied by the reaction and the words of this elder son. You all are acquainted with the fact that the younger son asked for his share of the inheritance while his father was still alive, which means he's kind of treating the father as though the father is dead. 
He asks for his part of the inheritance. The father grants him his wish, gives him his portion of his inheritance, and the son makes his way to the proverbial far country. As Tommy Tenney says that the father financed the son's journey away from the father. That what the father gave the son is what ultimately took the son away from the father. And I wonder, I know I'm just in my introduction, but I just wonder on tonight, how many of God's blessings actually finance our journeys away from God? <laughs> I wonder how many, I don't know, I don't know. I wonder how many blessings that God puts in our lives actually create distance between us and God. The, the prodigal son gets, this younger son, gets his share of the inheritance. He goes to a place called the far country and he stays there until he hits rock bottom. Mm -hmm. Because anybody who tries to live life independent of the father will end up in places where you thought you'd never be. <laughs> Am I in church on tonight? I mean, let me try it again. Anybody who seeks to find life independent of the Father will end up in a place where you thought you'd never be. He hits rock bottom, and the Bible says, I know you all know the story. I'm not trying to insult your intelligence, but the Bible says he hits rock bottom, and he came to himself. I love that. <laughs> rock bottom has a tendency of doing that. Because up to that point in this parable, he had literally been living outside of himself. So now, once he got some sense, he has now uh, repopulated the self that he was supposed to be before he even messed up. He came to himself, and when he came to himself, he came to the conclusion that really, I should go on back home now. It, it, it wasn't his disgust with self that led to thoughts of home. It was thoughts of home that led to a disgust with self. Okay, and so he decides that it's time for him to go back home. He makes his journey back to the house. Even before he gets there, the father meets him. And just about the time that this younger son was about to go in to his rehearsed repentance speech, I know I've messed up and I'm not worthy to be called your son. The father interrupted his repentance. The father interrupted his speech, looked at one of his servants and said, go to my closet and get the best robe because his clothes are tattered. And then while you're there, get him some shoes because his feet look weary. And then go to the jewelry box and get the shiniest ring put it on his finger because it looks like he had to pawn all of his jewelry and then get some food, put it on the grill because he's lost so much weight. Looks like he needs to eat something and the party was on. The dancing had commenced. Singing had started. And then the Bible says, Doc, the Bible says, meanwhile. <laughs> Y'all missed that. While all of that was going on, in the house. <laughs> Meanwhile, the elder son who had been working all day long, the elder son who was hot, sweaty, tired, and hungry, the elder son now leaves the field and makes his way toward the house. As he's getting closer to the house, strangely, he begins to hear music. He can look inside of the window and he sees people dancing, much to his chagrin and his surprise, because surely if there was going to be a party in the house, somebody would have told him. Somebody ought to help me here. <laughs> He, he looks and instead of going in to investigate himself, he asks one of the servants who was outside of the party, him, sir, if you want to know what's going on inside, you should probably go and investigate for yourself. He turns to one of the servants and says, what is going 
on and the servant said, your father decided to throw a party for your brother who has come back home. Here it is. All that was for free. Now enters the offense because the Bible says that the elder son became angry. He's, he's angry tonight. He's mad tonight. He's so angry that he, that he wouldn't even come inside church. He's so angry that he wouldn't make his way to revive. Here's the offense. The elder son is not angry because the brother came back home. He's angry because there was a party thrown in his honor. Okay, feels like I'm alone in here tonight. Let me, that, that, that he, he's angry because a party is thrown in honor of somebody who had been living in sin. Second time, a party is thrown in honor of somebody who had been messing up. Okay, third time, a party is thrown. People are shouting, running up and down the aisles in honor of somebody who had a bad, terrible reputation, who had messed up. The elder son is angry because the party implies that the actions had been condoned. This is the offense on tonight because the elder son wants justice. He wants to live in the kind of world that you want to live in. And that is those who do good are rewarded. Those who do evil have to suffer punishment. I mean, that's the kind of neat world that we want to live in. There's a former occupant of the White House, and a big part of me wants him to get his just due in the legal system because I got some elder son in me. Feels like I've lost my crowd, and so do you. You want justice for other people who have messed up. Look, this elder son is probably, he, he's, he's having a problem on tonight. Matter of fact, he says to his father all these years, I've been living right all these years. I've been in Wheeler Sunday after Sunday all these years. I've been paying my tithes all these years, and you've never thrown a party for me and my friends. It appears to the elder son that, 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 that the dishonorable is honored, and the honorable is dishonored. According to the elder son, that he, this, this, this younger son should not be given the fattened calf. He should be given bread and water. He should not be given a new robe. He should be wearing sackcloth. He should not be given a ring. He should be wearing ashes. There should not be a party. There should be some tears because this boy has messed up. So the elder son is angry. And I'm sure on tonight that he wears his anger on his face because nobody wants to be angry in private. Come on, I thought I was in Wheeler on tonight. So we like to wear anger on our faces in order to get everybody else to join in on our anger. Nobody wants to be angry in a corner. He's wearing his anger. He's so angry that the Bible says he wouldn't go in. They're dancing inside the house, but he wouldn't go in. They're praising, they're, they're partying, but he would not go in. They're having a good time here on this Wednesday night, but he refused to go in he, because he was angry. He's so angry, and it's so evident that his anger, that he's angry, that the father looks outside the house and sees the elder son outside and sees that he will not come in. So the father who was in goes out because the son who was out wouldn't come in. Okay, this father had already gone out seeking his younger son. Now the same father goes out to deal with his angry son because this is the God who comes out 
even when we won't come in. This is the God who in Jesus Christ left his home in glory. Come on, even if you're not a shouter, just blink an eye and thank God for the incarnation, the fact that the word became flesh and came and dwelt among us. This is the God who when you didn't have sense enough to come in, he came out. And if he had not come out, you would have never made it in because you wouldn't have had the strength to make Am I looking at anybody here who just wants to open up your mouth and tell him thank you for coming out when I didn't have enough sense to come in? The father goes out and looks at his son and basically says to him, son, you really need to learn how to dance. Everybody in here is having a good time and experiencing the joy of the Lord. And here you are out here with your lips poked out, mad at everybody. Your blood pressure is high. Your sugar is high. The only one who's missing out is you. Tonight, I came with the declaration that you should learn how to, no, I'm sorry, not that you should learn how to dance, but you should learn to dance. So even if you can't dance, Okay, okay, and when I say dance tonight, I'm not just talking about shouting in church, but I'm talking about living in the moments of joy. Come on, I ain't gonna bother you all, all night, but just look at somebody, tell them you should learn to dance on tonight. You should learn how to live in the moments. I understand that life is crazy and it's hard to dance when you're always not knowing what tomorrow is going to bring. It's hard to dance when you don't know when, when the next demented person is going to start shooting. It's hard to dance when you don't know what new virus is lurking around the corner. It's hard to dance when you're waiting on groceries, prices of groceries to come down and inflation. It's hard to dance. But I want to challenge you tonight to dance anyway. Live in the joy of the Lord. Live in the mo I know you came with some burdens. Anybody come with some burdens on tonight? I want to challenge you to dance anyway. Can I tell you why? Because life is too short for you to stand outside of the party looking in the window. Life is too short for you to be gripped in the quagmire of sorrow. Somebody ought to declare that I'm going back home. And I don't care how difficult it is, I'm gonna dance. I'm gonna live in the moment of joy. So here it is. The father says, if there's anybody who's having a hard time dancing on tonight, he looks at this elder son and said, basically, I, just let me tell you why. Let me give you a few reasons why you ought to dance on tonight. He said, the first reason that you ought to dance is because you are a part of the family. Come here, y'all not helping me over here. Let me let, that you are a part of, that he starts talking in this little speech that begins around verse 32. He begins talking to the eldest son and, 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 and redirects his attention to focus on what he has. He's so preoccupied by what's absent in his life that he's ignoring what's present. And, and when you are preoccupied with what's absent, you will miss out on what's present. So he redirects the attention of the son. He says, let me tell you something. Can I tell you what you do have? You have position, you have place, and you have possessions. Okay, it's all right there. He says, you have position because he says, my son, Please don't ever read the Bible too quickly. He, the word is technon. It, it means child uh, with a sense of warmth and tenderness. You are my child. And the fact that I affirm him does not mean that I deny you. Because I am not a God of either or. I'm a God of both and. 
and I know you seem to be applying, right, implying that all lives matter. I understand that, elder son, but there are times in history because of what somebody has been through where their lives or the life of that people needs to be affirmed above everybody else. You'll catch that on the way home. He says, just because I am affirming her, that mean I am denying, you are my son, my son, my child, my son, my daughter. That's who you are, and that's reason for you to dance tonight, because you have position. And then he said, you also have a place with me. He says, can, can I preach the Bible? You don't mind if I preach the Bible? He says, my son, you are always with me. There's enough room for you and my younger son. I am at that season of life now where I'm into that grandparenting stage. Got about four grandkids, got another one on the way, and sometimes I have the audacity to take all of them out to eat by myself. And, 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 and they're all little, and when we go out to eat, all of them are jockeying for position to see who's going to sit closest to Papa J. That's me. That's my rap name, Papa J. Look, they, 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 they all want to sit next to me. And the reason why they jockey and they push is because they feel like there's only so much room and attention that I'm able to give. Can I tell you on tonight that when it comes to Jehovah, we don't have to push and shove to be in his presence because he has enough space around him for all of us to be with him at the same time. He says, you are ever with me. <laughs> it's that you have position with me, you have place with me, and you also have some possessions. He says to him, can I preach the Bible? He says, um, and everything I have is yours. No matter what has happened, elder son, you have an undisturbed inheritance. One, two, three, four. I don't care what life does to you. Tonight, you have an undisturbed inheritance. So says the book of Romans. He says, and the spirit itself testifies with your spirit that you are a child of God. And if you are a child of God, hmm, you are an heir of God. And if you are an heir of God, you are a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Now, if that doesn't make you dance on tonight, if that doesn't cause you to live in a certain level of joy, something is the matter. He looks at you tonight and says, if you're looking for a reason to dance, I'll give you a reason. First of all, you're my child. And then you're in my presence. And then you have what I have. Well, what do you have, Lord? The cattle on a thousand hills belongs to him. What do you have, Lord? The silver and the gold belong to him. What do you have, Lord? The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. You have a reason to dance on tonight. <laughs> you, 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 you. You have a reason. First of all, um, he says to his elder son, listen, 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 listen. I want you to come to the party tonight, and I want you to dance, first of all, because you are in the family. And then the other reason you ought to dance tonight is because it will enhance your sanity. Some of y'all wondering where I'm getting at. <laughs> He looks at his elder son, and, and, and preachers, I, I, sometimes you just preach the words. I just love the words and the phrases here. He said, my son, um, you are always with me, and everything I have is yours. He says, but we had to. I think the King James says, it's, it's necessary. And, and that whole idea of it's necessary means something that grows organically out of a situation and is not pushed because of obligation. You, that, that we aren't partying tonight because of obligation. But any partying we're doing tonight, he says, is the organic overflow 
of the nature of the situation. Okay, is the organic overflow. I'll preach it till you get it. Of the nature of the situation. He says, we're not having to force praise. We're not having to force the, that you can come to church, not here at Wheeler, but other churches. You can tell the difference between people who are worshiping out of obligation and people who are worshiping out of the overflow of the nature of the circumstances. People who are worshiping out of obligation have to have a praise team. Have to have somebody cheer, lead them into worship. But if you're worshiping out of the overflow of the nature of the situation, nobody has to make you give God glory. However you choose to worship God, it will be the organic over, it'll be, I can't help it. I, I didn't even come here to do all this tonight, but I can't help it because it's the organic overflow. <laughs> look, 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 look. He, said, he says, it was necessary for us to celebrate. I wish I had time on the night because that, that, that whole idea of celebrate in its original meaning has to do with being well in your mind. It's connected to a word that means to be well in your mind. Okay, it means that we had to celebrate um, because there's a connection between celebration and mental wellness. Okay, um, he said there's a connection between, uh, let me try it again, between celebration and praise and mental wellness. Well, and, 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 and I'm not talking anything I don't know because experts in neuropsychology uh, say that people who worship and people who praise and pray have a better chance of being mentally well and stay. I don't even need to know what they say because the prophet said thou will keep him in perfect peace who so when you praise God and people think you're crazy, look at them and tell them, no, I'm not praising God because I'm crazy. But I'm praising him to keep from going crazy because there's a relationship between my worship and my mental wellness. You don't have to shout. You don't have to dance. You worship in your own way. But your worship leads to a certain mental but the father said it was necessary. I'm almost done with you on tonight. That we had to celebrate and watch connective uh, conjunction. He says for us to celebrate and be glad. Can I preach the Bible? And be glad. I don't want to get too technical, but, 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 but that root word is the same word for the word grace. Chorus is the same word for grace, in other words, our dancing is connected to the experience of grace. Now, if you have not experienced grace, I give you the permission to leave right now because I'm about to scratch where you're not itching. But if you know anything about the experience, okay. The problem with the elder son, the reason why he's mad is because he's more interested in fairness. Now the parable, Pastor Burrell, uh, does not ignore fairness, but it goes a step farther and says, grace overrides fairness. And some of y'all who hadn't done anything all night ought to at least wave a hand because if Fairness was not overridden by grace. Your seat would be empty right there. Come here, come here, come here, come here. The last thing you want is for God to be fair. Christians don't believe in karma. Look, I don't believe in karma. If, if it was a matter of karma, y'all would have had to get somebody different to preach on tonight. But grace overrides, as a matter of fact, every morning there's a race. Every morning there's a race between justice and grace, racing to the throne of God. 
And the fact that you're alive on today means that grace outran justice. Somebody ought to throw your head back and tell them, thank you. Thank you tonight. You, I don't care how bad life is for you, you can live life in the dance. First of all, because you're in the family. Second, because it will enhance your sanity. But then I tell you this, I promise you I'm taking my seat. He says that, he says to his elder son, you ought to dance tonight, yes, because you're in the family. Yes, because it will enhance your sanity, but also because of your brother's history. He said we had to party because your brother was dead. Okay, uh, hold up. Um, he, he, he redirects the attention of the elder son so that his attention is on somebody else. So that sometimes your reason to dance has nothing to do with you. And mature Christian discipleship is able to rejoice because of what God is doing for your neighbor. Mature discipleship can celebrate the promotion of another even when you thought you should have been the one. Mature discipleship can, can, can celebrate the fact that it, it was her, it was him, it, when I thought it should have been me. Um, I uh, grew up in Columbus, Ohio, and I grew up on a street called Mary Hill Drive, Mary Hill Drive. And uh, there's another street that ran parallel with Mary, Mary Hill Drive called Maryland Avenue. So in the summertime, when the ice cream truck was coming, um, kids, we kids who lived on Mary Hill Drive would hear it when it was on Maryland Avenue. When the ice cream truck was on Maryland Avenue, you could hear the bell ringing. And we would start jumping up and down on Mary Hill because the ice cream truck was on Maryland Avenue. We had no ice cream in our hands, but we figured that if the ice cream truck was blessing people on Maryland Avenue, eventually he was coming to Mary Hill. You ought to bless God on tonight when you hear the ice cream truck in somebody else's neighborhood. I just want you to go home dancing. I just want you to go home living in the joy of the Lord. Look at what the father says to this son. He says, this brother of yours. Do you see it, Doc? This, this brother of yours. Now, when you read it closely, when the brother was crying, the, when the elder brother was crying the blues, he says, this son of yours. But when the father talks, he says, this brother of yours. Okay, when the elder son is talking, he disowned his younger brother because his brother had messed up so much. The father says, this brother of yours, as if to say, the younger brother has been reconciled to me. And if he's been reconciled to me, he ought to be reconciled to you. And as a matter of fact, you cannot own me as your father if you don't own him as your brother. Because how can you say that you love God who you have not seen, but hate the person sitting next to you who you see every day? The Bible says you are a liar because there's a connection between your vertical and your horizontal. So quit talking about how much you love God and you're walking on the other side of the church so that you don't have to speak to certain people. Ooh, I'm done, not for real, I'm done. Stop talking about claiming God. God says love your neighbor. God says love your sister or your brother. The, Lord, the father says to the elder son, he said, tonight we had to party. 
we had to wave our hands. We had to shout hallelujah. We had to run the aisles. Come on, we had to give him glory. Because your brother, who was dead, is alive. Your brother, who was lost, is now found. And that's reason enough. Come on, tell your neighbor, that's reason enough. He says, your brother's history is reason enough for us to wave our hands and to open up our mouths. Notice that the older brother, when he's talking about his younger brother, he begins to talk about how, how, how can you throw a party for somebody who wasted your money on prostitutes? The father doesn't even address what the younger son had done. He simply celebrates the fact that he's back. Every now and then, people will try to remind you of what you've done and where you've been. But I heard the father say that the focus on tonight is not on where you've been, but it's on the fact that you're back. It's on the fact that you're here. People will try to remind you of what you've done and where you've been. But the Father says the only thing that matters on tonight is that you're here. I'm here. You're here. I got to leave you now. But look at your neighbor. And if you don't mind grabbing them by the hand and tell them if you knew where I've been and if you knew what he has delivered me from, you would dance with me. So here's what I want you to do. Dance, dance, dance. Because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Dance, because I once was dead, but now I'm alive. I once was blind, but now I see. Is there anybody here who just wants to all throw your head back and tell him thank you, thank you, not because of where I've been, but because I made it back. Is there anybody here who has the testimony that I made it back, I've been to hell and back, but I'm here, I'm here, and I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Every now and then, you ought to wave your hands and tell him thank you. Thank you because you brought me. Thank you because you taught me. Yeah! Come on, touch somebody. Tell them it's necessary. It's necessary for us to shout. Come on, tell somebody it's necessary for us to give him glory. It's necessary for us to give him praise. Every now and then, you gotta go beyond yourself. Every now and then, you ought to criticize your pride and give him the honor that he deserves. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, his name, his name. Are you dancing yet? Are you dancing yet? 
Are you dancing yet? Are you dancing yet? Have you started dancing yet? It's time to dance! don't just dance for themselves. Mature Christians will dance for somebody else. Now find somebody on your row around you who made it back and say, this dance is for you. And I need you for the next several seconds to come on and dance in this house for somebody other than you.
Bolivia. all over your house. Give him thanks in whichever room you share. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for giving us permission to dance. Thank you for giving us reason to dance. Thank you for giving us space to dance. Thank you for giving us an opportunity to dance. We had to dance. Because somebody on our road made it back. Yes, Lord. We had to dance. Hallelujah. How we thank God for the Word of God from the man of God who is Dr. Jerry Carter. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I had no doubt that the Lord was going to use him powerfully tonight. The Lord always does that through him. But I'm so grateful that he tailor-made that word for some of us in this room tonight specifically freed us up to dance, to live in the joy of the Lord. Entirely too many Christians have been mired by depression because we didn't know we could dance. 
Doc told us tonight that our dancing is linked to our mental, mental wellness. Our mental wellness. Free yourself up to dance. Free yourself up to live in the joy of the Lord. For the for for you need to remember you're in the family. It helps with your sanity. When you think of our history and that we made it back, that's reason to rejoice every day of the week. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Some came from back from the brink of death, devastation. Some who have histories that you would never want to hear about because it would make you shame. But the Lord God caused us to triumph. So we've got a reason to dance. Somebody tonight may need to come back. Come on back home. You've been away for far too long. Been in that far country longer than you want anybody to know about. Somebody tonight may need to come on back home. <laughs> because it's time for you to be back with the family. We have a party over here every single week. And we want to dance for your deliverance. Yes, we do. If you need to make your way on back home, the invitation is extended to you, my dear sister, my dear brother. Come on back. Well, you say, Pastor, I didn't even know I was in the family. I need to be connected to the family. I need to be linked to these brothers and sisters who celebrate the goodness of the Father. I want you to come on down one of these aisles. If you say, Pastor, I need to be saved. I need to be a part of the family. Today is the day for me. I want to come even right now to be a part of this great family of believers that gathers at Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. Unsaved, unchurched, or you returning to the place where you know you need to be. Man, woman, or child, whosoever will, let him let her come, even right now. The invitation is extended to you. Our arms stand wide open to receive you. These leaders are all across the church. The Lesters are standing with me. If you need to make your way, come on, even right now. Thank you. Yeah. Here she comes. Come this way, sis. Come back that way. Tell him thank you, Lord. They'll make room for you. They'll make space for you. Thank you, Lord. They'll make space for you. That's what family does. Thank you, family. Hey, sis. Welcome. Thank you, Lord. Welcome. Thank you, Lord. Welcome.
I just want to thank you. somebody look towards somebody on your left or your right in front of you or behind you and ask them is the pastor waiting for you let's do some pure evangelism the pastor waiting for you if they say no say praise the Lord if they say yes say I'll walk with you I can't walk for you but I will walk with you let's go on down there tonight it's revival time it's a great time to be saved great time to be a part of a church they say nothing ask them again you want to be sure you want to be sure before we leave church tonight they didn't respond make sure you get an answer make sure you give them an answer is there another who needs to come if you're saved and you know you're saved shout hallelujah if you're a member of a church and you're growing where you're going say praise the Lord well if you could not respond hallelujah or praise the Lord this invitation this may be for you do you need to come on down this way do you need to come on down this way? Is there another? Is there another? Is there another? The Lord has just blessed our church with six new sisters. Will you help me celebrate? Help me celebrate. Ah, oh, here comes seven. Here comes seven. Praise the Lord. Seven, seven, seven or eight. Seven or eight. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What a joy. Seven new sisters tonight. Somebody ought to thank God for that. What a joy. What a joy. My dearly beloved sisters, on behalf of this entire church family, I want to say to each of you tonight that you are so very welcome here at Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. I cannot tell you how grateful we are that out of all the places where God could have sent you to either commence or continue your Christian journey, he sent you to Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. I'm excited to serve as your pastor. These brothers and sisters around you are excited to be your new family. Can't you tell? Excited to be your new family. On behalf of all of us, we say to each of you, welcome to Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. We're so glad you're here. Come on, church family, one more time. Celebrate them. Hey, sis. You know I went to that school? I'm an alumnus of Whitney Young High School. She went to the same high school I went to. She didn't even know it. Praise the Lord. She got her sweater on, her hoodie on tonight. We're going to be real good friends. All right, God bless you. Go right there with Deacon Lester, will you please? And he will take you to the new member orientation room, and we'll share with you. She had no idea. God bless you, ma'am. Praise God for you. Come on, church. Celebrate them while they, as they leave the place today. Praise the Lord. Chicago. Amen. Listen. Dr. Carter is just an amazing man of God, and I'm so grateful that he came to grace us tonight with his presence and his proclamation. Thank you, sir. We are the better because you passed this way. We are the better. Anybody glad you came to church tonight? I know I am. You said the rain wasn't going to stop you, didn't you say it? I'm glad you made it. There's some who got a little drenched on the way to, from the car to the church house. But thanks be to God you made it. Amen. I want you to get back safely. Is it still raining? Is it raining now? Talk to me, somebody, because the deacons are going to help. No, it is not. Praise the Lord. Okay, if it was, uh, everyone would be able to be uh, attended to by our deacons. They'd be glad to take you to your cars in under an umbrella because they've got umbrellas for you. But if it's not raining, that's good. So get to your car quick. Uh, make sure, yeah, make sure that you don't get get too drenched on the way. Dr. Pastor Kim Burrell, where'd you go, sis? She slept out, but I thank her so much. Thank you, ma'am. That's my sister for real. Praise God for Usually see her in the airport. It's good to see you in church. Amen. We usually see each other in the airport. It's glad to see you in church tonight, and we celebrate you. To all of you who have come, all of you who are sharing around the world, God bless you. To God be the glory. Let's praise God from whom all blessings flow.
some among us who have not yet registered to vote. We're in the last six days of the voting of the registration cycle. Our social justice ministry will be in the atrium as you leave the Lord's Church tonight. Please register today or Sunday. We will be there Sunday for you to register. We want to make sure that you are eligible to vote in this next election. It is absolutely necessary that we do just that. Amen. And praise the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And you're going out and you're coming in. In your labor and in your leisure, in your joy, as well as in your sorrow, in your laughter and likewise in your tears. Until that day when we meet the Lord face to face and cry holy, holy, holy to the Lord of hosts. Until that day, my brothers, my sisters, go in peace, go in love, go in joy. And may the very God of peace, love, and joy go with you as he causes you to dance in Jesus' name. Let's sing together. Amen. Church family, have a great rest of the week. Can't wait to see you Sunday, if not before.